Anthony Smith, more commonly known as the Easter Ripper. Tonight we'll go inside his vacant home, where 11 innocent children spent their final moments in agonizing pain and terror. Untouched since those horrible crimes eight years ago, some say his spirit still haunts the home till this day. Cut! Let's take a break. Murder House is a new survival horror game, developed by the evil genius known as Puppet Combo. I say survival horror, but a better way to describe it would be VHS-era, low-budget, 80s slasher. Slasher movies have an important difference that sets them apart from traditional horror films. It's horror, which revolves around a group of people being hunted down by a killer. Think Halloween, Psycho, Friday the 13th, that sort of thing. It's a great subgenre of horror that thrived in the age of blockbuster when everyone had access to a VHS player and a 50 pound television. There was a huge influx of slasher movies made during this time, which left a lot of the really good ones to be buried under a pile of flaming dog shit. The thing is though, bad slasher movies can be entertaining on their own. Something about the genre just works on both sides of the quality spectrum. So that brings us back to Murder House. Anybody can throw a VHS tape effect over some jump scares, but I'm not sure I've come across a game which nails the atmosphere of an old slasher film as much as this does. And now that Halloween is only a few days away, what better time to get into the horror spirit? Wait, what? Oh, you dumbass. When you first start, you have the option to begin right at the main game or to do a short prologue. Let's start there. Okay, kid, you're next. Come on, kid, get your ass up there. Smile, kid. The prologue gets you ready for how this game somehow manages to be both super blunt about what you're supposed to do, and simultaneously throw you to the fucking wolves. There's a locked gate blocking my way out. I find a key to presumably open that gate. I open my inventory and click on the key. Guess it goes somewhere else? I run around. I circumnavigate the entire mall. I come back. I click on the key. It doesn't work. I click it again. It works perfectly. Oh, okay. To be fair though, I think that this game expects a basic level of competency that I simply just don't possess. I also tend to be easily mind-flooded when a horror game is able to effectively build tension, and almost immediately this game showed me that it knew how to build up tension. Horror games are tough because in order for it to really work, the visuals, the sound, and the gameplay all need to be spot on. Gameplay is obviously important, but in my opinion, the quality of a horror game is largely dependent on the quality of its sound. You could probably get away with making a bad looking horror game that sounds really good, but a good looking horror game with bad sound design? I'm not so sure. The good news is, Murder House sounds amazing. I mean, not amazing, it sounds like the musical embodiment of a horrific fever dream, which is kind of the point. On top of the high quality sound, I think it also looks great. To be honest, I was a bit skeptical at first. This was the first puppet combo game I've come across, so I wasn't going in with any expectations. I mean, I like the look of it from the trailer, but any fan of indie games could tell you that PS1 style graphics are a bit of a trend right now. For one thing, that era of gaming brought about some of the best horror games ever made. Combine that with the fact that low poly environments can inherently be a bit easier to make and blur the lines between what looks good or bad, and you've got yourself an indie trend. But in Murder House, that style is here to help tell the story. It all goes back to that 80s slasher aesthetic, and there isn't a single part of this game that doesn't want to capture that. I mean, look at this menu. 
It could have just been some text over some analog video in the background, but there's so much more care than that. Presentation was clearly a top priority, and it involved a lot more than just adding some VHS scan lines. Not only does it give you the option to turn that effect off, by the way, but it gives you more options to switch between as well, to get it looking just how you want it. That's a bit more than just jumping on some indie trends. There's definitely some love being shown here for the original Resident Evil as well. Considering that's one of the most popular survival horror games of all time, it's not a big surprise. It's not trying to be subtle either, and for a good reason. Resident Evil set the standard for high-quality horror games, but then again, that was all the way back in 1996. This game uses the infamous tank control system, with the cameras fixed on certain spots and the character moves based on the direction that they're facing. Which, depending on who you are, is either a big plus, or enough of a reason for you not to buy this game altogether. But I have to say, the fixed camera angles are a big part of why the horror elements worked for me. You can actually switch to first person in the settings, but I really don't think the game works as well. It wasn't designed with first person in mind, and I think you'll negate a lot of the dread and claustrophobia that tank controls give you. I'd say it looks like a significant step up from other puppet combo games, but there's still a healthy serving of jank. As far as the story goes, it's exactly what I would want from a slasher game. It didn't have to be anything more than just some creepy setup, but then they said, you know what, let's make it hilarious too. Ew, this place? I can't believe I went from the news desk to this. You're lucky you have this after the incident with the poodle. That could have happened to anyone. Where are the pizzas? This is Dana Turner, on location. I've just been informed that we're stuck here. Someone has wrecked our van and we can't get our fucking pizza lunch promised by my producer. God damn it, Dana. Cut! It's over the top, overacted, and absolutely perfect. You're playing as an intern for some shitty local news station who's doing a special on the Bunny Ripper, a serial killer who was put to death for murdering children. Apparently the real estate agent who was supposed to let us in is missing, so the natural next step of course is to break into the house from the basement window and- Wait, are we committing a felony? I mean, we literally broke into the house and now I'm searching all the cabinets. Ooh, is that a crowbar? The characters only have a few voice lines each before shit starts hitting the fan, but even in that short amount of time, they're really able to add a lot of personality. This is a great opportunity for you. Put in a little extra effort and you can really get ahead. If you know what I mean. What is this? The Today Show on NBC? <laughs> the game doesn't waste any of your time to start building up the tension again, and these early moments during the calm before the storm are crucial for learning the layout of the house. Yeah, it's gonna be one of those types of games. Progressing is pretty much how you would expect. You find something in a room that allows you to do something in another room. It's not exactly puzzly, especially with how blatantly it spells things out for you. It's a little bland, and wasn't the highlight for me. What is the highlight for me is constantly looking over my shoulder, wondering if I'm about to get a sickle shoved up my ass. The thing about horror games is a lot has already been done. Murder House finds itself in a bit of a unique place, because what it's trying to deliver is an experience that's true to the slasher movie genre, not just to old horror in general. And what's a bit surprising about that is that actual slasher games are somewhat few and far between, at least compared to other types of horror games. And so there's this sort of contentious question that comes up around how this game scares you. I've heard other horror games criticized for having cheap jump scares, where there's nothing really scary going on besides something popping out at you while your ears are blasted with noise. How are you supposed to fucking find anything? <laughs> Holy shit! I agree with a lot of that criticism, but I don't think it's fair to jump to that conclusion with Murder House. Are there jump scares in this game? Absolutely. But more often than not, they're used to build up to something bigger. There's the constant feeling that something is lurking in the shadows watching me. And it's because there is something there. What really brings this game to the next level for me is that these aren't all just scripted events that trigger when you press a button. There's a point in this game where you realize that what is actually stalking you is an intelligent AI and not just something that comes out of the corner when you enter a certain room. So the feelings of fear come from more than just a loud sound in your headphones but from the terrifying game of cat and mouse. I have another gripe with horror games when I feel powerless. That can definitely add to the fear factor, but at the same time, I don't wanna just be hiding in a corner the whole time praying that the monster goes away. I wanna be hiding in the corner praying that the monster goes away while holding a crowbar. It's a bit of a small difference, but it gives me something to grasp onto as my last hope. 
I mean, I do think that there are some areas where this game misses the mark. The sound itself is super well done when it comes to the effects and music, but I wish the difference between its lows and peaks in volume were turned down a notch. I really liked the atmosphere that those sounds were able to make, and the soundtrack on its own feels like nothing I've ever heard before. But some of that can get washed out when you try and set the volume to a level that won't make your ears bleed when the bunny man comes for you. Where are the pizzas? Most of my other complaints are a bit too rooted in that spoiler territory, and I don't think they're a big enough deal to spoil a game over. I'd say the two most important things to know before buying this game are, first, it's a bit more disturbing than it may lead on. Which is fine, I just think that you should be aware of that before you spend your money on it. And the second thing is, that it's also pretty short. My playthrough took about three hours, but you may even be able to do it quicker than that. I definitely don't think that's a negative thing. In my opinion, the game accomplishes everything it's set out to be. Almost every item in every room has significance, and the game doesn't waste your time. Trying to stretch it out any longer would probably take away from the experience. But it's just important to note, because it's a $12 game after all. Not unfairly priced, I'd say, but definitely more expensive than some other games with similar playtimes. I say not unfairly priced, but not just because it's a good horror game, but because of where the money is going. As I said before, this game was developed by Puppet Combo, which from what I can tell seems to be a one-man show by creator Ben Kakuza. I hadn't heard about Puppet Combo much going into this game, but since then I've become a bit captivated, or maybe bewitched or something. He's made quite a few releases that have seen success, but not much in mainstream attention. Partly because Murder House is one of his first games to hit Steam, most of his other great work is on itch.io. At first it seems like his games followed the same set of ideas as Murder House. But the more I look, the more impressed I am by what I'm seeing. Based on what I've heard from fans of Puppet Combo, some of these titles can be hit or miss. But you can definitely tell that he's honing the craft, and I just hope he continues to send me to the weird workings of his terrifying imagination. And the more he puts out, the more it all starts to work together. There's evidence in a lot of his games that they're all connected in the same universe. That's the type of feature that nobody ever expects from developers. It comes from the desire of a dev to make something bigger than just a game. It's giving your fans a reason to keep paying attention. Everything around the release of these games is interesting to me too, especially with how much effort goes into the VHS tape covers and movie-like aesthetic within the marketing. Waiting for his next release feels more like waiting for your next favorite horror film to come out. Whatever his next project is, I get the urge to just throw money at this guy and just see what comes out the other side. I've never contributed to a Patreon before, but Puppet Combo sure has me thinking about that. I'll link to that in the description, as well as where you can find his other great stuff. Help me! There's somebody else in here! Top of the morning, you ladies! My name is Jacksepticeye!